Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. John, uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part B of angels, their purpose in the plan of God, uh, specifically the New Testament. So let's go to Luke chapter 2 and uh, let's see what happens. Verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. So evidently this is some kind of a uh, census and they're going to collect a tax. You know what they say, two things for sure life, death and taxes, right? Unless, of course, you're one of the people living in the end times when Christ returns. There are people that will not see death, believe it or not. But uh, that's going to be a very, very, very small group. They will just go from flesh body to resurrected body. But that's another study altogether. And let's get going here. And after... Uh, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. So I guess the reason they did this was so that everybody could, uh, you go to the place where you were from, because the taxing officials would pretty much know everybody, right? And uh, know if there's any tax cheats. Yeah, these people didn't take kindly to you know, not taking their taxes. And like I mentioned in part A, uh, Rome was a newcomer taking over this area. You know, they were a newcomer. The Greeks had had it for a long time. So, all right, verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in, in the inn, the hotel, right? And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. A uh, little thing here. You know, they always, they picked uh, December 25th for celebrate the birth of Christ. Really? You, you think the shepherds are in the field uh, when it's cold, winter, you know, maybe snow? Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Some of the most knowledgeable scholars believe that Christ was born in the fall. Uh, tabernacles, perhaps, the Feast of Tabernacles. That would be... To me, that seems most reasonable, but uh, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I sincerely doubt December 25th. And for those of you that don't know it, uh, witches celebrate at least three holidays that I know of. Halloween is one. Do you know they celebrate the winter solstice? Uh, yeah, they call that Christmas. And uh, Easter. Easter is the name of the spring goddess of fertility. Yeah, that's how come they got uh, Easter eggs and uh, bunny, the Playboy bunny. I mean, the, the, the Easter bunny. Well, maybe I was right the first time. But, uh, you know, they, Christ died on Passover. 
Find out when Passover is. Go three days later. That's his day of his resurrection. Easter and Passover seem to almost never coincide with each other. I think there was one year it did, but that's if the datings are correct. I, you know, I don't know. I'm not a Levitical priest. They're the ones that did these calculations. You know, it's just me. I don't know. So, but uh, that's, I, I just don't see uh, the resurrection happening on uh, Easter Sunday morning with a sunrise service. Yeah. All right. So, shepherds. And they were there in the same, um, and there were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So it's got to be fall. You know, you're not going to have your, your livestock in the field in the dead of winter. They're going to freeze to death, you know. And lo, the angel of the Lord... The angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Who does this angel of the Lord come to? Shepherds. What did the Lord say he was? The great shepherd that gives his life for the sheep, right? What was King David? A shepherd, right? And God's Israel is likened unto sheep. And if you ever talk to people that have dealt with sheep and, you know, people that are, people that have raised sheep or what have you, They'll tell you sheep are the dumbest things in the world. Can I get an amen? You know, they'll... Uh, if a bunch of wolves come and, and grabs one and starts killing it and eating it, they'll just stand around and look. Hey, uh, what happened to Harry? Ah, oh, he got chewed up by those wolf things. Yeah. Oh, bummer, dude, you know. You th you think we ought to go somewhere else or uh or stick around or what? Uh, I don't know, you know. But uh yeah, sheep are really dumb. You know, <laughs> look at believers, supposedly churchgoers. You know, people died to give them the Bible and they won't even bother to read it. You know, but they'll watch hours and hours of television. So, but who do these angels come to? Shepherds and proclaimed good news to them. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Well, I don't know about all people, but, uh, I mean, the Bible says all people, but um, I don't know about the wicked. It's not going to be good for them. 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the King. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Yeah, let's go check this out, dude. I want to see this, you know. Uh, that, that probably would have made for some interesting conversations, you know. 
And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. You know, that would have made some interesting conversation back in the day. You know, a bunch of bunch of uh, shepherds. I don't know how old they were. You know, they could have been teens. They could have been adults. They could have been old. Who knows? You know, and they're like, dude, we had an angel came and talked to us. And then there was these group of angels and they're singing this beautiful song and then they went up to heaven and uh you know what would the uh what would people think you know you're telling them this stuff boy what what have these guys been drinking and smoking huh wow what they find some peyote cactus or what so i don't know so the birth of Christ was, uh, you know, there's some people that heard some of these stories, you know. But you know how people are. They, you know, uh, yeah, these shepherds, they were probably had some kind of weird dream or something. Uh, who knows? Or they're making this stuff up, you know. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. So Mary, Mary didn't talk about this much, I guess. And she was always thinking within herself, what in the world is going on here? And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished, for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yeshua HaMashiach. No, no, no. His name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. See, when you believe the Hebrew roots so-called, Hebrew roots heretics, they will deny this. Oh, no, that's not really what it means. Yeah, those those terrible Greeks, they got a hold of the Bible and then they mistranslated it to puff themselves up because we know his name was Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. I think my Bible says what it means and means what it says. What do you say? What do you say? But hey, that's just me. And you want to know something? Let me tell you something. When you see all the TV preachers, the Vatican, and the uh, rab buys all proclaim that the Messiah has come, you're going to know something. It's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you see the Pope and all the TV preachers agree with the um, those that deny Jesus, that the Messiah has come, yeah, you're you're gonna know it's the wrong one, yeah. So, verse twenty-two. Well, verse twenty-one. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So I guess the, you know, they're to the temple, right? As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. This was the uh, law of the firstborn. You could read that in the book of Leviticus. Esau was the firstborn. Cain was the firstborn. Not very holy, but they were the firstborn. Um, yeah, so things got a little messed up there. So, 
Verse 24, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, that he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. What, is, what does he mean, for the fall and rising again of many in Israel? Everybody falls in death, except for the few that are going to be alive during the uh, when Christ returns. And glory. So they fall in death and then they rise again in the resurrection. And that sign shall be spoken against. Oh yeah, by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? 35. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess. Not too many of the prophetesses in the Bible. There's, uh, I can think of three offhand. Miriam, Moses' brother, was one. And Deborah was another. There might be another, but I, I can't remember it off the top of my head. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phinuel of the tribe of Aser, Aser Asher, that's, I guess, the Greek rendering of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow about four, four score and four years. So she's about 84 years old, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake to and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Hmm. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. Not Easter. Not the spring goddess of fertility. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. You know why they went up to Jerusalem? Because it's built on seven hills, just like the Vatican or Rome. But they don't like to tell you that. They don't like to tell you Jerusalem's on seven hills. That's a reference to the book of Revelation, people. Where it talks about the city on seven hills. Yeah. Jerusalem's on seven hills. Just like Rome. But they always tell you Rome, but they don't tell you Jerusalem. Because they want you to think Rome is mystery Babylon. Well, the mystery of Babylon. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk 
and acquaintance. So they're with family, you know, kin, and uh, they're acquaintances, probably, you know, neighbors and what have you. And, uh, you know, I guess they, like, uh, they, they missed him, right? They figured, hey, he's 12 years old. He knows what he's got to do. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Boy, I'll tell you what, when uh, Jesus asks you a question, <laughs> it's uh, he was always asking questions they couldn't readily answer, you know? Uh, you know, I, I took electronics in uh, vocational school. And I had a really good teacher. I liked him a lot. And he'd never answer a straight question. Never would. He'd always ask you a question. And by the time you answered his question, it answered your question. He'd been, he must have been doing that for a long time. He used to repair marine uh, electronics. Yeah. But uh, he was really good at it. So I guess Jesus was kind of the same way. You know, he'd ask you a question and you're like, hey, wait a minute. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, what's up with that? You know. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, Thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And we're not talking about Joseph here, by the way. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. At least till he starts flipping over tables, right? Then they didn't like him so much. All right, let's take a look at John, book of John, chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up, went up, to Jerusalem, you know, those seven hills, right? Now, there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, you know, the sheep market, you know, those dumb animals that need a shepherd? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And us dumb sheep, speaking for myself, by the way, uh, need a shepherd. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. This dumb sheep has done so many dumb things that... Uh, I've got a PhD, a doctorate degree in being dumb. I probably got two or three of them. Yeah. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Now think about this. Why would the Bible say, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda? Because the New Testament was written in Greek. And that's why it says, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. See, the Greek is telling you what it's called in the Hebrew. Because it is possible that the pool was called, you know, had a Hebrew name because it was in Jerusalem. So, you know. But if the Bible was written in Hebrew, it wouldn't say this. It wouldn't say, oh, in the, you know, it, they wouldn't go, uh, let's see. Connecticut, in the English language, is called Connecticut, okay, or New York. You know, it just wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's telling you. The New Testament was written in Greek, but it's telling you the pool 
which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five uh, porches. And there's a hospital, well, a kill center probably, called Bethesda in uh, South Florida. Verse 3, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. I guess the angel goes down and stirs up the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Hmm. Oh, that's why they named the hospital Bethesda, huh? Except for you don't get you don't get cured. You don't get made whole uh, at, at the hospital. They just treat your disease for the rest of your life so you can suck your money dry, right? Verse 5, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. This guy was 38 years. He'd been uh, ill or whatever, or crippled or whatever, right? When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had now uh, been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Are you going to be healed? The impotent man answering answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise! Take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. <laughs> yeah. He answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And you better read verse 16, 17, and 18 <laughs> by yourself, because if I read it, this video might just disappear from this uh, channel, yeah, because there's certain things in the Bible that we're not allowed to read anymore on the internet because it's hateful. Yeah, 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 we're not allowed to read that stuff. Of course, Jesus had uh, told them that they were hypocrites because, hey, one of your animals falls into a ditch on the Sabbath day, you'll you'll pull him out. But uh, if I try to heal somebody, uh, you get all upset about the deal. You know, you guys are a bunch of hypocrites. They didn't like that, right? So let's read about the beginning of uh, Jesus's ministry. Let's go to Matthew chapter four. I know I'm skipping around. I'm not doing this in uh, chronological order. But uh, it's all relevant, I guess. So, Matthew 4, verse 1. All right, Matthew 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. 
40 days and 40 nights. Uh, let's see. Where have I read about that before? Oh, Flood of Noah, right? 40 days, 40 nights. How many years did Israel wander in the wilderness? 40 years, right? Uh, 40's got some significant meanings to it, um, but this is not going to go into that. Uh, you'll notice when you read the Bible, you'll notice certain numbers uh, pop up. Sometimes they're good numbers, sometimes bad numbers. Like 13 is generally not a good number, generally. 11, you know. All right, so Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Boy, I'd be, oof. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. See, Satan knows scripture. He sure does. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. Which probably was very pale in significance and boring compared to heaven, right? You know? Streets of uh, streets of gold compared to you know sand. <laughs> so I, I you know I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. I think I'd pick heaven over uh, Rome and Babylon and uh, yeah. But hey, that's just me. And saith unto him, you know, Satan is saying this unto him. He's saying, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. <laughs> the creator of the universe, you're really, dude, you're going to try to give the creator of the universe this fallen world. All he's got to do is fall down and worship you. Eh, I think I think he's going to pass here. What do you think? Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Hmm. See, the Bible tells you that uh, Jesus was tempted of the devil, and then here it is, he calls him Satan. There's actually... People that'll tell you the devil and Satan are two different beings. Uh, I don't think so. Just read Revelation chapter tw uh, 12. That tells you. They're the same being. You know, they'll do anything they can to mess with your head and to discredit the Bible and whatever. All right, so verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came, angels came, and ministered unto him. So I guess they brought him some food and took care of him, right? Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. So, you know, that's the thing. After you've been a believer for a little while, you're going to be tested of the devil. It happens. 
It happens to... Seems like it happens to all of us, but... All right, let's take a look at Matthew 13. Now, I did a playlist on this, uh, The Wheat and the Tares. I think it's a four-parter. So that's a couple hours long. But we're just going to breeze through this. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. This is the wheat and the tares. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. See, the, the wheat puts forth good fruit, but the tares, uh-uh. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? You know, this ties right into Genesis 6. Right into it. And uh, probably 90-something percent of all the churches deny this. Of course, they all work for the enemy. Virtually all of them. All the big denominations work for the enemy. I don't think there's any of them that... Uh, I just don't see how you could have anybody decent in any big denomination. I, I just... My opinion. There might be some small independent churches that are decent, but... Few and far between. I wish I could find one near me, but oh well. Of course, if they had a perfect church and I joined, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. So. so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath the tares? Uh, Farmer Joe, wait a minute. Didn't you plant all this wheat? Where did all these weeds come from? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Hey, you want us to do uh, some weeding? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. So much for the pre-trib rapture, right? They teach the opposite. They teach the wheat gets gathered first. But that ain't what Jesus taught. Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Yeah. The weeds get bun binded into bundles to burn, and the wheat gets gathered. So... Uh, let's see. Let's go to verse 37. 36. 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Can you explain this to us? We don't get it. He, Jesus, answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Genesis 6, people. The tares are the children of the wicked one, the Canaanites. The people don't believe that. They think uh, believing men marry unbelieving women and they have giants for children with six fingers and six toes. Yeah, that's the kind of nonsense the churches teach nowadays. No wonder the church is dead. They turn the Bible into a fairy tale. You know, the tooth fairy. Satan's claws. I mean, uh, Santa Claus. The Easter Bunny. Yeah, the Easter Bunny lays chocolate eggs. Yeah, what? I don't even want to go there, you know. 
the children of the wicked one the enemy that sowed them is the devil the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels see the angels are going to reap the harvest now remember in a another study i did on this series one angel wiped out the assyrian army of 100 and over 180,000 troops 180,000 troops that's a big arm one one angel wiped out an entire army 180,000 plus i think it's 184 but don't quote me on that i just know it's well over 100,000 you know and the reapers are the angels as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire so shall it be in the end of the world of this world the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity see god's angels are going to gather the the tares the weeds and then do what? Verse 42. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. All right, Matthew 16, 24. Then saith Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You know, if we're called to die for the gospel, we're supposed to die for the gospel. Tell that to the pre trib rapture crowd. I just wonder how many people are going to end up denying Christ when the man of sin appears the son of perdition the beast the antichrist whatever name you know they got a, several names for him uh only two people in the bible called the son of perdition judas iscariot was one and then the end time man of sin is uh another one so let's see verse 26 for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul how much gold can you accumulate you can offer God's you know gold God's like uh, I created the gold dude you're gonna give me back what I what's already mine for the Son of Man shall come in his in the glory of his father with his angels And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Some of those rewards are going to be good. Other people are going to be rewarded with uh, something that they'd rather not be rewarded with. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. All right, let's go read Matthew 18, verse 3. Jesus speaking, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, Lord wants us to be like little children. Little children, generally, look up to and listen to their parents you know they have to depend on them for everything right you know for food for clothes for everything and lord wants us to be just like that but uh not stubborn and rebellious and yeah except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. See, a little a kid wanted to come to Jesus. They had more sense than uh, the Pharisees that had doctorate degrees in theology. This little child. 
And the disciples were saying, oh, you know, keep these children away from Christ. Uh, now you got the, um, well, I, I better not say it because I'm going to post this on tube. So, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Millstones were generally 70 pounds or about uh, 30 kilograms. It would be better if you were drowned because after your heart beats, quits beating and your brain dies, you'd be better off because in a thousand years, you're still going to be in the flames. Seven, woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to hurt little children. Let me tell you something. All these, all these uh, people that mess around with these kids, there's going to be an extra special hot place in hell for them. They think they're getting away with it now. And I'll be honest with you. I hope these people are extremely harsh on the churchgoers for tolerating this stuff. Really. I, I, you have no idea the disgust I have for people that so-called attend churches. Verse 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut it off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Everlasting fire. Mm. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Listen to this. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels... Do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. You know, I used to hear people say, Oh yeah, little children have got guardian angels. Uh, looks like it to me. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels, the little ones, they have angels. Their angels that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So these are not the fallen angels. These are the angels that are in heaven. And if you think Satan's still in heaven, may I suggest you read Revelation chapter 12. I don't think so. A lot of people tell me, oh, Bob, that's, but that's going to be future. I don't think so. You know, Jesus said, I behold Satan as lightning uh, cast from heaven. I'm paraphrasing, but you know, that was like, around 2,000 years ago. So, you know, past tense. Verse 11, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Matthew 22, verse 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, now, the Sadducees were just a denomination of Jews, and they were, they were the temple, um, they were the modern, they're at, the, at that time, they're the modern day equivalent of the Levitical priesthood, the Levites. And their scriptures were the first five books of the Bible, which commonly is called the Torah. T-O-R-A-H, and that consists of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, 
they accepted those books of Moses. Uh, the rest of the Bible, you know, the Psalms, the Proverbs, uh, the book of Kings and Chronicles, Jeremiah, Isaiah, they don't accept that. They, they only accepted the book of Mos the books of Moses, generally. And the Levitical priesthood, their book was the book of Leviticus. It told them how to run the worship services for animal sacrifices. Uh, which, to me, that's one of the most, to me, it's one of the most boring of books. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm a Levitical priest, but, you know, hey. So, the Sadducees, that is what they did. They were the ones that uh, if you went to the temple and had a sheep that you wanted to burn for a sacrifice, you would give it to the Sadducees. So the same day came to him, Jesus, the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection and asked him. And that is why they were sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection. They believe, you know, when you die, you kick the bucket. That's it. Life is over. You're done. I mean, what kind of a what kind of a sorry religion is that? You know? Eat, drink, and be merry, and not merry M A R Y, but M E R R Y, you know, be happy. Eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow we die. So live for the day. The grassroots did a song by that. I you know, so yeah. So they say there's no resurrection and asked Jesus saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed or children unto his brother. Now, I think that's in Deuteronomy, could be in Leviticus, I'm not sure. So they're asking Jesus a question. Now, there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, he died, and having no issue, no children, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. So she didn't have any children with all seven of her brothers. And that's pretty much Levitical law. Therefore, now they're trying to trick Jesus here. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. E-R-R. -R. That's where they get the word error. Like, you guys are, dude, you guys are messed up. You got it all wrong. Ye do err, not knowing the scripture nor the power of God. For in the resurrection... They neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But are the angels of God in heaven. Now, when you start talking to people about Genesis 6 and, uh, you know, the giants, and then you look at the sons of God, like in Job 38, when it says the sons of God were shouting for joy at the creation of the earth, the foundation of the earth. You know, when Adam didn't come until six days later, you know, they, they'll, they'll always throw this and uh, say, oh, angels can't have children. They can't have sex. And they'll quote this. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. And they always leave out those last two words. But are as the angels of God in heaven. No, not all the angels of God are in heaven. No, some were cast out to the earth. And they'll always do that. You'll notice this. Oh, and by the way, some of the modern Bibles delete those two words. And that's what they do. They quote these modern Bibles. I'm telling you, these modern Bibles, some of them are pretty slick. It took me a, a long time of studying and it wasn't just me i mean i had other i had some really good teachers that showed me some things and i tried to take the good and 
throw away the bad. I mean, not that I'm right about everything. Um, so, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Yeah, not all the angels are in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. See, you know, I've had people ask me about uh, what's the name of God that we should pray to. And you know what? When I came first came back to the Lord, that's what I did. I said, uh, uh, you know, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. There is absolutely no question who that is. None. You know, the sacred namers, they can argue about how to pronounce the name all they want. But I know who the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is. So, there you go. All right, let's take a look at the harvest. Matthew 24, verse 29. Jesus speaking. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. You know, you know, it's going to be pretty, even to unbelievers, it, there's going to be some signs in the heavens. I and mean, it's going to be pretty hard to explain that away. The man of sin, the antichrist, the beast, whatever you want to call him, um, he's going to have a hard time explaining away that. Of course, he'll probably say that he's responsible for it. But uh, verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now there's a thing called uh, Project Bluebeam, uh, holographic projections. Uh, that's some pretty amazing stuff. You can look it up on your own. Uh, don't go by all their conclusions. You know, some people are saying, oh, well, they're going to do, you know, a UFO invasion. And I don't know if that's true, but, you know, it could be, but I'm not saying it is. I don't know. But they could fake a coming in the clouds with glory. They could fake it. You know, they've been sh launching satellites like crazy. And nobody wants to tell us what they're for. Are they going to be holographic projectors? I don't know. I don't know. Could be. Could be. I mean, they're, they're sending up all kinds of uh, satellites. So, what are their purpose? I don't know. But uh, if if somebody did, if they did a, um, a holographic projection and everybody saw something coming in the clouds and then the man of sin appears and his false prophet has power to do miracles, including bringing fire down from the sky to burn up his enemies, Mimicking what Elijah did, you know, people are gonna, people are gonna be convinced Christ has come. Maybe not the God, you know, maybe not the Christ of the Bible, but they're, they're Christ, their Messiah, they're, you know, I don't know. I just know whoever the TV preachers proclaim as the Messiah, it's gonna be the wrong one. That's my guess. So. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, 
And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Isn't that just like the wheat and the tares? The angels are going to be doing the gathering. So, yeah. In Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels, H-O-L-Y, all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So if there is holy angels, there are unholy angels. Look in Ezra 9. There's a holy seed and there must needs be a unholy seed. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Matthew 25. All right, uh, we just read verse 31. Let's read verse 32. All right, so, When the Son of, Ga Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Um, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Huh. Don't they call Christian conservatives right-wingers? And don't they call communists and socialists the left? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is where it comes from. The sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And um, Christ always compares himself to the great shepherd, right? And uh, what is the symbol, animal symbol of the Church of Satan? The goat, right? I mean, <laughs> can it be any plainer than this? Huh? Huh? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. I mean, come on, people. Let's have a, 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 a spiritual application here. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Okay, so the, the good the good people, the, the sheep on the right, they, they get the good thing, right? Now we're going to take a look at the left. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Do you know there was no hell prior to the fall of Satan? Think about it. Everlasting fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. Mankind was, I, I don't, the way I look at it, I don't think it was in, it wasn't for us. Verse 42, for I was hungered and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger and ye took me not in, naked and ye clothed me not. See, your works always follow your, what you believe, your faith. You can read James chapter 2, ties right into this. You know, what you do will follow what you believe. You know, you see somebody naked in the winter and they're freezing to death. Are you going to give them some clothing? Or are you going to just watch them, uh, you know? 
I was a stranger and you took me not in, naked and you clothed me not, sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered or thirst or a stranger or a naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. You know, their heart wasn't right. You know, you don't earn your salvation by doing good works. But if you're truly saved, good works will follow. Will definitely follow. It always does. All right, I think I'm going to make this uh, the end of part two. I don't like going much more than an hour. Um, so this is going to be part B. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to finish this up with part C. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. To God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.